بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم صبحكم الله بالخير The name of God, uh, most merciful, most compassionate. Good morning. For the second uh, day, we are still uh, enjoying uh, your presence and the uh, discussions uh, in this uh, forum. And for the first session, I uh, trust we will be uh, reviewing three papers uh, on a uh, public uh, policy making, especially when it comes to higher education and uh, education policies. Mr. Ali Watfa is our colleague from Kuwait. Uh, he is an uh, educational sociology uh, professor at the Department of Sociology and Social Service at the University of Kuwait. He is a former professor of educational sociology at Damascus University in Syria. He has been the recipient of several awards, uh, most recently the Humaid bin Rashid Award for Social Science for 2014. He is the author of numerous articles and books <coughs> on education, most recently Arab Issues and Arabic uh, Problems uh, at the University of Kuwait, uh, the opinions of a sample of students at the University of Kuwait, uh, published by the Center of Gulf and Arabian Peninsula Studies in 2014. Uh, we will be uh, interested, of course, uh, in listening to his uh, paper in, uh, titled Higher Education Policy in the Gulf States, Future Problems and uh, Challenges. I hand you over to Mr. Ali. The floor is yours, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for this uh, beautiful introduction. In of God, the most merciful, the most compassionate, distinguished guests, dear colleagues. Good morning. I would like to thank you for being with us here this morning. Also, I would like to express my thanks and gratitude uh, to the members uh, of the preparatory committee and the team of uh, this forum uh, who have uh, welcomed us warmly. My paper will deal with the future of education in the Gulf. Uh, it will uh, talk about the problems and the relation between higher education in the Gulf states and uh, the fourth industrial revolution uh, as an embodiment uh, of uh, the future or as an, uh, a scientific embodiment of the future ra rather. It also deals with the different strategies that uh, universities can adopt in an attempt to face the challenges of the fourth industrial revolution and uh, benefiting from uh, its um, outputs. The future with what it carries from surprises and its revolutionary, of course, uh, baggages is one of the main challenges uh, that faces modern uh, human communities. Also, the future was and still is uh, the main, of course, obsession uh, of uh, researchers uh, who deal with uh, from uh, from the mid last century until today is the industrial revolution the fourth actual industrial revolution really is uh, is brandishing its flags and is uh, also uh, warning uh, of great changes actually in our social lives and it could be literally uh, it would be it, it could be actually described as a storm as an all out storm that will affect our humanity it will affect uh, this is our systems our experiences our values our cultures and i can define the fourth industrial revolution on a literary level by saying that it is the intifada, the revolution of the human brain, and its uh, revolution in the field of science of, uh, and scientific knowledge. It is actually threatens uh, of uh, really toppling uh, the traditional uh, regimes and systems that we know, undoubtedly, that modern man 
or the modern human being act, uh, cannot foresee, cannot follow, cannot know the uh, uh, the uh, quick changes and the quick trends of changes uh, that uh, is being influenced by the fourth industrial revolution uh, with its great uh, mental and cultural and economic uh, uh, um, Rev uh, evolution and innovations. This uh, and the future also uh, has signs of great changes. The question uh, to be asked, or the rhetorical question, in one sense, is that uh, universi universities and higher education, higher education institution will not be able to face uh, this legendary wave, which is the fourth industrial revolution, and uh, it will, of course, ultimately fall unless it revolutionizes itself, it revolutionizes its strategies and its capacities. And the question uh, that should be asked today, can the universities, can the Gulf universities or uh, the higher education system in the Gulf states, uh, can it uh, really stand and uh, face uh, this uh, great wave of the fourth industrial revolution? Can it, with its structure, with organization, with the traditional, uh, with the traditional makeup, really move with the future, or will it be on the margins of the history and will not be part of the future, which is represented in the fourth industrial revolution? Uh, this is the core question that I will try to answer in this lecture or in this paper. These are the questions uh, on the screen. I've mentioned them in the introduction. Are there educational policies? Are there new educational strat strategies? Is there any form of new educational planning that uh, uh, attempt to try universities on the right path, path to face the challenges of the fourth industrial revolution and uh, its promises? Can these universities actually respond to the to the challenges of this revolution. Uh, undoubtedly, the fourth re industrial revolution is based uh, on a nuclear integration aspect uh, between sci scientific revolution, between uh, scientific and educational innovation. And uh, this diagram also shows a clear picture of uh, the uh, discoveries, the genius discov discoveries uh, that uh, 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 that uh, began at the beginning of this millennium in the revolution, uh, fourth revolution industry, including the, uh, the technology and scientific, of course, uh, uh, innovations and nanotechnology, Internet of Things. Uh, and uh, biotechnology, this, it is a group uh, of discoveries, a group of innovation. The fourth industrial revolution is different from the previous industrial revolutions because it is based on a great number uh, of continuous revolutions. It is a continuous scientific revolution in its different aspects on different levels, while the three previous revolutions were revolutions that were based on one discovery, the first industrial revolution that was based uh, on uh, the steam, uh, uh, steam energy, the second industrial revolution that was based on electricity, the third that was based uh, on <coughs> internet. Uh, here we f see a pack of continuous re revolutions which makes this revolution per se dangerous and scary at uh, the same time. I want to uh, I want to introduce Klaus. Uh, Klaus Schwab, of course, uh, is uh, the uh, president uh, of the World Economic Forum that describes uh, this revolution as a grand tsunami that uh, and uh, that storms in our society. He says that that was at the threshold of the fourth industrial revolution that will change radically the way in which we live, the way in which we work, and this change will include all aspects of our life, of our existence, and it will be unique. Uh, in, in, uh, in the humanity, be it uh, from this, uh, the size and or, or complexity of this change. Of course, there are a number of numerous definitions. Now, when I talk up, when we talk about industrial revolution, there is uh, a sea filled uh, with uh, tides and waves. But in my paper, I will uh, concentrate on two aspects uh, that uh, uh, that affect uh, higher education, artificial int intelligence, and hence uh, the uh, work market. Because we know that the main job of university is the scientific, of course, uh, job that is related to artificial uh, AI, artificial intelligence, uh, and it is uh, preparing people uh, to enter the work market and preparing, of course, students uh, to enter life. Uh, undoubtedly, the humanity, uh, the identity of humanity is uh, 
is being uh, uh, is windward uh, and of course the machine itself now is taking a human uh, aspect uh, and uh, this is uh, something that uh, uh, that is really scary because human will lose his control on his destiny on his fate uh, by via the main changes in his uh, human identity and uh, the the main, uh, uh, the main and clear challenge of uh, facing universities and educational institutions is represented in the lack or absence of jobs. For example, uh, the World Economic Forum uh, report of 2016 shows that 65 percent of children uh, who are uh, enrolled in primary school uh, will uh, will get jobs that are not found today, and this shows that between 80 to 70 percent of jobs uh, will disappear in the upcoming 20 years. Uh, also, it is expected uh, to obliterate uh, 57 million jobs uh, by 2022 in uh, 20 main economies. Uh, undoubtedly, what can universities do? Our universities today, do they plan for the, this revolution? Uh, are they looking into these issues? Uh, the skills also are in, in, uh, are in a continuous change. Uh, they change. For example, we see innovation between 2015. It was in the last uh, uh, ranking last uh, now. Uh, among skills now it is uh, it is ranking third there are new skills there are new jobs uh, are universities uh, really preparing and training students and members of society uh, to uh, work in these in these new jobs uh, the status of university uh, uh, international universities uh, with regards to fourth, uh, the fourth industrial revolution are of fourth levels there are universities that produce the revolution there are pioneering in this revolution universities are trying to go in par with this uh, revolution, uh, of course, uh, universities of uh, Japan, uh, South Korea, while, our, while other universities are trying to go in par, and they are also pioneering universities, and third, uh, a third kind of universities that, 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 that are behind the bandwagon, behind this uh, revolution, they are not even thinking of this revolution, and uh, our universities, unfortunately, are uh, classified in this category of, uh, of universities, uh, un unfortunately. So these universities, any university, be it Gulf universities or non-Gulf universities, should revolution themselves, a continuous revolution in their programs, in, their, uh, in, its, uh, in its way of work. And this revolution should be continuous in order to be able to go in par with the uh, shocking challenges that we'll be facing in the future. Uh, of course, uh, uh, the factor of uh, in a, or, or of failures and insufficiency. Uh, every factor, every component has reports, has figures, has statistics with regards to our Arab and Gulf universities. Uh, we see that these universities uh, are reproducing and producing what is traditional in the society, and. Uh, 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 they have become traditional cultural light lighthouses in our society. Who can say that Gulf uh, universities have uh, academic freedom? Uh, reports and indicators and indi and this is uh, say that there are no uh, cultural freedom in these universities. Uh, uh, the budget of research uh, in the Gulf states are zero, are nil, 0 0.03, while in Israel it is 7% or 7.5% in Israel. In uh, all other uh, countries of the world, it's 2.5%. Uh, this budget uh, is not only for universities but for society for uh, uh, as a whole so the budgets really are tragic uh, uh, and universities uh, uh, do not uh, 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 research centers uh, are n unable are weak are unable to go in par with the fourth scientific and industrial revolution uh, our universities are politicized uh, they are a scene for political conflicts uh, and this uh, leads uh, to uh, uh, for uh, this leads uh, for these universities to, to be unable to partake university academic corruption in all the arab world uh, There is, of course, corruption in scientific research, uh, in forged uh, university degrees. This is a main issue in the Gulf. Yesterday, university teachers uh, uh, are being uh, sent uh, to uh, court in Kuwait and other Arab countries. Uh, uh, these universities uh, are educational institutions. Uh, what are they are what they are doing? They are uh, producing unemployed graduates. They do not know how to work. They do not have skills enough skills. They do not. They are not unable really 
really to perform in society. The main problem is there is a lack of planning. There is there is no strategies. There are no strategies that look into these matters, into these issues, into what is the uh, main role of universities. I uh, did, um, uh, I undertook a lengthy research that included uh, a number of uh, university professors and I've asked them the questions here on the screen. Uh, uh, are our uh, Gulf uh, universities uh, in their current academic situation uh, capable of facing the challenges of industrial revolution? Uh, yes, 5%. Uh, is there any change in the structure of these universities? 7%. Yes. Uh, the educational policies in the Gulf states, uh, are they find, are, are they establishing strategies? Uh, the 4% uh, answered yes. Uh, the uh, Gulf universities, are they providing students with the required skills? 8%. Yes. Uh, uh, the Gulf universities, are they training its uh, students uh, to live uh, in modern age? 6% answered yes. Uh, uh, unfortunately, these are the opinions of uh, university professors and researchers that are well known in the Gulf. Uh, uh, to me, really, it, this is very saddening. I have uh, many documents uh, that uh, prove that uh, uh, this is not only an academic uh, report, it is a scientific empiric uh, research that is based on a questionnaire uh, on scientific research. Uh, I will give you a simple example uh, that I came at, uh, I came by, sorry, haphazardly. This woman, uh, this young woman has an MA in nanotechnology in KSA. My time is up. His alarm uh, just sounded off. <laughs> she has an MA in nanotechnology. She is selling, f she is selling, uh, uh, as we see here on the corner of the street, uh, and the nanotechnology is the cornerstone of artificial intelligence, as we know. Look at her. She is selling food. Sorry, we cannot hear the video clearly. I circulated my CV, she is saying, to different uh, companies uh, in the private sector, even in the, I sent my, uh, my CVs my CV to the to a number of government institutions, uh, but uh, all doors were locked in my face. Uh, what I presented today is a critical uh, paper. Scientific research today, unfortunately, is uh, really uh, uh, is really only trying uh, to improve the image of the current regimes uh, and the current <coughs> systems. Uh, what I did today was present a critical point of view, and I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Ali Watfa, for this valuable paper. And I will uh, just want to shed light on one of the terms you've mentioned, is that man or that the machine today is taking a human dimension and that uh, intelligence uh, and artificial intelligence uh, will play the role of man in the future and that 65% uh, uh, of jobs will change and 56 uh, million individuals uh, will lose their job in the near future. And this calls us uh, really to invest in man more and to invest in the cultural and civilizational role uh, uh, of universities in our Arab world in order to go in par with the fourth industrial revolution in order to promote an education, uh, uh, educational capital or knowledge capital. And universities really should prepare uh, leaders uh, that can 
face the challenges of the future, and this go in part with the public policies in the field of education, higher education, and that universities really should be producing uh, uh, graduates uh, that can uh, go in par uh, with the innovations. Uh, the second paper will be presented uh, by uh, by Jalil Al Balushi. Entitled, uh, so her paper is entitled Educational Policies. Apparently, there is a typo. Educational Policies in Oman on the eve of the launch of Oman Vision 2040 Scenarios and Challenges. It's all about revolution today, apparently. M Mrs. Uh, uh, Jalil Al Balushi is a PhD student at the Faculty of Education, Sultan Qaboos University of Oman. She was formerly a civil servant at the Ministry of Education at the Sultanate of Oman. Her research focuses on education. She has recently published a study entitled Cognitive Economy Skills in Omani School Education, an academic study in Delphi style in the Journal of Education and Psychological Study. Is this correct? Yes, correct. Thank you. Go ahead. Go ahead, uh, Jamila. Good morning. Uh, my name is Jalila Al Balushi. I um, the Mr. Chairperson introduced me. I would like to uh, thank you and uh, the Arab Center for this invitation. My paper today is entitled Educational Policies in Oman Amidst uh, the uh, Knowledge and Economic uh, Based uh, Knowledge Revolution, Challenges and Future Scenarios. Educational success in any country rests on uh, how a policy is understood and to which extent it is implemented. Studies uh, talk about educational policies and how they are uh, tackled. Some uh, see that educational policies are a traditional uh, approach. However, uh, critical uh, the, the, crit the critical thought uh, school believe that the traditional approach doesn't answer this uh, problematic. The uh, paper answers two questions. What is the position of educational policies in Oman from a critical point of view? And here there are four dimensions. What are the general direction of policy? Uh, what, uh, how is uh, power uh, distributed? And what is the influence of social uh, classes? And what are the uh, challenges? in these uh, documents. Uh, the second uh, question uh, is the future scenarios of those uh, policies uh, in the light of a knowledge-based economy and the fourth industrial revolution. These are the study uh, questions. Uh, this study is important. Um, uh, because it offers uh, valuable uh, data and it focuses on how uh, policies uh, interrelate uh, instead of focusing on uh, problems and uh, challenges. In the Omani context, uh, the uh, methodology, the methodology uh, uh, hinges on the uh, critical thinking uh, approach. What is the uh, general uh, policy, uh, what is the vision of the uh, people in uh, power, and what are the uh, envisioned uh, policies uh, regarding uh, challenges and future scenarios. The study identified uh, the educational documents in uh, Oman, which is uh, the state uh, con uh, constitution, the educational uh, law. Educational uh, outcomes, uh, first dimension, difference between speech and practice, uh, 
If we identify uh, the uh, general guideline of the uh, study, we see that uh, a public policy speech focuses on four uh, dimensions, uh, not the importance of education, the objectives of, the, uh, of uh, education, and as a uh, general uh, direction, we see that uh, most uh, policies focused on a speech rather than a practice, and this created a, a gap. The uh, state uh, constitution, the uh, philosophy of uh, Oman, and the educational uh, documents focused on the importance of uh, having a high level uh, uh, education and skilled faculty and staff. However, all these uh, documents uh, didn't include uh, any indicators to uh, measure the performance in uh, these uh, documents regarding the content of uh, those uh, documents regarding the importance of uh, education, the management of education, and the control of education. There is uh, no uh, mentioning of uh, such uh, content uh, regarding uh, distribution and uh, uh, implementation. Uh, results show that there is no clear uh, distribution of uh, power in these uh, documents, and the uh, proof being that in Oman uh, there are uh, diverse uh, schools and diverse uh, supervision bodies uh, of the school. We have private schools, we have public schools, but we also have uh, schools uh, affiliated to the police uh, and uh, to the uh, Royal uh, Navy. <coughs> We also have uh, schools uh, affiliated to uh, feminist uh, organizations. Uh, in higher education, it is the same thing. We have uh, vocational colleges, universities, technical college. We have the military technical college, and uh, every college is supervised by its own body. Regarding the third uh, time mention, how policy affect social classes, there is uh, no content in this uh, document uh, mentioning any impact on political on social uh, classes however they include a recommendation to develop education for the benefit of low income individuals so it was only a recommendation regarding challenges within uh, these uh, policies uh, and for decision makers uh, in the uh, documents there are no mentioning of such uh, challenges oman a vision uh, included uh, only like uh, general uh, challenges and no uh, not uh, challenges pertaining uh, to education or higher education per se Educational uh, funding, educational management, and educational control were, uh, however, included in other educational do uh, doc documents. So, regarding potential uh, scenarios uh, of uh, such educational policies in light of the economic, uh, of the knowledge-based uh, economy and the fourth industrial revolution, we have the uh, exhaustive. Uh, a scenario, uh, the partial scenario, and the limited scenario. In the uh, comprehensive or exhaustive uh, scenario, uh, there is uh, good uh, governance. In the partial scenario, the uh, status quo is dealt uh, with um, on a case-by-case Basis and in the limited uh, scenario, we have a, a traditional approach to uh, educational uh, policies, and this uh, scenario doesn't deal with the requirements of the fourth uh, industrial uh, revolution and doesn't speak of good uh, governance. Regarding rec recommendations, uh, first identify a, a clear. Uh, 
uh, approach to review all uh, these uh, documents, uh, establish uh, auditing uh, and review uh, mechanisms, uh, also establish partnerships between uh, people who uh, draft uh, such uh, policies and actors from within the uh, society in order to achieve the objectives set out in all uh, aforementioned documents. Thank you, Mrs. Jalila, for this uh, paper regarding public policies. And uh, this uh, paper was uh, co-authored by uh, Mr. Saif and Mr. Hilal. Here, I would like to uh, note uh, that the Sultanate of Oman has uh, taken uh, leaps in a development uh, project, and it was named one of the most advanced uh, countries in terms of human uh, development over the five uh, years, and it moved from uh, it uh, moved uh, now to higher uh, ranks uh, and it keeps up uh, with uh, uh, other uh, GCC countries uh, and other uh, states uh, with a uh, high uh, human uh, development indicators, including Kuwait. Your uh, paper on public uh, policies uh, uh, reflects uh, how uh, Omani scholars are uh, exerting efforts to align uh, public uh, educational uh, policies uh, with the uh, uh, strides achieved by Oman in uh, human uh, development. And uh, this will uh, help the entire uh, humanity to uh, develop and evolve. The next uh, paper will be presented by Mr. Abdullah al Tubi. Mr. Abdullah is was uh, the Dean of the College of Arts and Humanities at Sharkia University in Oman. He is uh, uh, he has a PhD in uh, philosophy and uh, and he was uh, formerly an associate professor in uh, Nizwa University and uh, he uh, was the Director General of the Colleges of Applied Sciences at the Ministry of Higher Education. He has held a series of academic positions at different colleges of applied sciences at the Ministry of uh, uh, as well. He is a re his research focus on uh, um, the development of educational programs and plan and the training of science teachers. His paper is uh, uh, about citizenship in education policies and strategic in strategies in the GCC countries, uh, citizenship in educational policies and strategies in the GCC uh, countries. And uh, he takes Oman as uh, a, a case for study. In the name of God, the most merciful, the most compassionate. At the onset, uh, I would like to welcome you all, and I would like to thank the Arab Center for Research and Policy Studies for organizing this forum. And I would like to thank Dr. Fahd al-Fadala for chairing uh, this session. The paper, as you've mentioned, is the is talks about uh, the Gulf youth uh, and uh, how they look at uh, the value as of citizen citizenship that is that are the pillars uh, for developing uh, higher educational higher education and education policies and strategies in the GCC states, especially that the study will take Oman as a case. Uh, my Colleague Ahmed Al Fawair also is a co researcher in this paper.
I apologize for the slight delay. This is the title of the paper, and I will be The presentation includes a number of points, but I apologize for technical glitch. The first point, we had a research project that was supported by the Scientific Research Council in the Sultan of Oman. Uh, this project uh, went on for four years, a period of four years, and there was uh, and uh, it uh, included a, co a, a group of uh, outputs. The we prepared a, uh, an indicator uh, for the concept of citizenship uh, in uh, Oman. It is. The second output of this project was a publication of a book on citizen citizenship in the higher education institutions in Oman, as well as a guideline for volunteering, which uh, has a direct relation with regards to citizenship and seven scientific papers that were published in a number of uh, conferences and were part of the proceedings of these conferences. And we've also participated in 12 international and local conferences. In addition, to three research papers uh, in uh, uh, in uh, scientific journals uh, and five MA students uh, participated in this project uh, and uh, five uh, 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 university theses were funded related of course to this pro project in addition to interviews uh, with uh, education experts in Oman. One of the research papers uh, that was uh, produced by this project uh, received uh, uh, the medal or the award of educational excellence. Also we organized workshops and seminars in schools and universities in Oman about uh, citizenship education in addition uh, to uh, uh, producing a number of suggestions and recommendations. As you know, in truth, the Gulf societies uh, in general, repre uh, the, the youth, uh, the youth uh, represent 65% of its population. 
and the request for higher education or the demand for education is increasing year per year, especially in Oman in the previous years. We have registered a large number of uh, students uh, in higher education institutions uh, in uh, Oman. As you know, there are a number of great challenges uh, that uh, we can see on uh, this education scene uh, in general and universities in particular, perhaps uh, mainly industrial revolution and globalization, as mentioned by my colleague in his paper. This led uh, to a, an overlap uh, of uh, cultures and uh, many things that led uh, to a change of behavior among individuals, especially university students. The concept of citizenship uh, has received uh, great attention by researchers, uh, be it uh, those who are concerned in this subject or university professors. Accordingly, it is a multifaceted concept. Uh, perhaps uh, in uh, the slides, upcoming slides, we will talk about some of these concepts. And there is a great responsibility that should be shouldered by universities and decision makers with regards uh, to the project uh, related to edu uh, citizenship education. University is a cornerstone of society because it it, uh, uh, it prepares future generations uh, and uh, through its work in education, teaching, community service, scientific research, universities should consecrate uh, its, uh, a, a, a large portion of its uh, role uh, to raise awareness uh, among uh, the future generation and should contribute to preparing uh, students uh, to be open, uh, uh, to be democratic, uh, social justice, uh, freedom, uh, uh, and to education, uh, to educate them on these concepts and others as well. The concept of, edu of citizenship. Apparently, there's a technical problem. <laughs> As definitions, there are many definitions for citizenship. There are many definitions for citizenship. Some look at it from a social perspective, from the the relation between the individual and society. There are definitions that look at it from a political point of view or perspective and definitions As I've mentioned, there are many definitions, whether they are related with the social aspect, political aspect, or the definition that we've uh, reached with regards to citizenship is a citizenship is a system. Accordingly, the concept that we've come up with has two dimensions, a horizontal and vertical dimension. The horizontal is related uh, to the national identity and belonging. The vertical is related uh, to obligations and duties and political participation. There are many forms of citizenship. I don't believe that I have enough time. There is, uh, There are fake citizenship, uh, negative citizenship, uh, citizenship, uh, uh, 
absolute citizenship between positive and negative and positive citizenship where a citizen is positive uh, that uh, changes uh, all negative behaviors uh, he can face. Uh, there are many concepts uh, related to citizenship. Uh, we have loyalty, belonging, justice, democracy, rights, uh, obligations, etc. And, uh, and uh, many concepts related to the values of citizenship. Education, citizen education is also multifaceted. Perhaps uh, we will deal with two aspects here. Uh, all the procedures that uh, and processes that that could be undertaken by education institutions, whether schools or universities, in order uh, to consecrate uh, the values of belonging and citizenship among individuals. Uh, uh, and these are here are students, of course. Uh, but the term that is uh, being used currently, which is uh, uh, citizenship education in the 21st century, let me uh, allow me to read it. It is uh, bringing uh, a, a knowledgeable uh, individual who is active, uh, who knows this, uh, the, his civil duties and obligations. He is in. He is. Uh, he is. Uh, he has. Uh, he is well knowledge in uh, health, uh, education, economy, uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, he has uh, the skills needed for the 21st century. He is able to partake intelligently and positively and responsibly in the digital world. Uh, perhaps uh, this is uh, the most comprehensive uh, definition of citizenship uh, that uh, we were able to reach in the 21st century, the model uh, that we used in this research paper in order to measure the level of citizenship among uh, university students uh, has three uh, has three uh, categories belonging to the past, future, and present. And in each category, we have knowledge, uh, we have behavior, and we have uh, And we have, of course, emotion. Uh, this is uh, the definition of citizenship and its dimensions. Uh, I will go through it quickly because I do not have time. It is related uh, to here belonging to the past. Uh, the person uh, takes a decision based on his historical background uh, without looking at the present and without looking to the future. It is a kind of belonging to history, so to say. The other dimension is belonging to the present. It is uh, a present reaction that could be negative or positive, and it is a changing reaction. And this dimension, uh, which is belonging to the future, he is thinking what will happen in the future. These are the belonging to the time. Di these are the, belo uh, the aspects of belonging to time dimension. There are modern challenges and contemporary challenges uh, uh, that face promoting the values of citizenship. Uh, among uh, these challenges, the main challenge uh, is, uh, uh, is marginalizing uh, the opinion of uh, the majority, uh, taking individual decisions. Uh, perhaps here loyalty is to a certain group. Uh, that uh, it is uh, that is uh, far removed from uh, nationalism. The increased uh, uh, the increasing number of ex expats in the Gulf. I believe statistics are very clear with this regard. In some countries, uh, expats form 80% of the population. The third point, which is a main challenge, is the spread of unemployment in all its forms among university uh, graduates and students. This is a phenomenon that is uh, uh, gradually growing day by day, and the main challenge facing citizenship. This uh, makes the youth really less uh, committed uh, to uh, uh, to their uh, uh, less committed uh, to their citizenship and to negative behavior. Social media and media today also is playing a great role that is negatively sometimes affecting the value of citizenship, globalization, and the uh, and uh, the technological boom is a clear and dangerous challenge facing the promo promotion of educational val uh, citizenship values. Uh, the importance of the study is a theoretical, uh, is on theoretical level is that it deals uh, with the, uh, it gives, sorry, a vision or it shed lights on a number or a group of thoughts how we can promote the values of citizenship among university students, the of uh, research. Uh, 
we have uh, uh, the sample is 752 of course university students uh, we have 66 indicators uh, in uh, three dimensions present past and future also we have the cognitive dimension behavioral dimension that uh, was uh, used in this uh, research. This is the structure of the uh, of the paper. We have the, the variable is uh, the understanding of students of the concept of citizenship. We have we ha we we have of course this paper was peer reviewed. The results or outputs of the study. The representation of students uh, in the Sultan of Amman was 3.22, which is more than average. The practices that are uh, that mainly represent the values and concepts of citizenship was uh, the emotional aspect and sentiment, uh, the uh, the feeling of security, of safety, stability. Uh, this. Uh, uh, scored high scores. The behavioral aspect, it is clear that a person, of course, is emotional. Uh, he loves his country, but unfortunately, practices are different on the ground. This is another issue that should be discussed, uh, perhaps, in a different paper. We did not see a lot of differences, discrepancies uh, related uh, to gender uh, or year of study or university or college. Uh, there were discrepancies also uh, we found among universities. This is uh, the vision, our vision or recommendations. We recommend integrating the concepts and values of citizenship in the university programs and activities uh, via the following uh, headlines. The first headline, forming a steering committee an independent committee that undertakes integration. It includes a number of duties and tasks, of course, to be taken by this committee. These, these are the tasks here on the screen. The second uh, headline, uh, re-evaluating and redesigning university curricula. And this will contribute uh, uh, to promoting the values of citizenship. The third headline, re-examining educational environments. So they go in par with the 21st century. The next headline, it is related also to the educational environment, documenting partnership between university and uh, local communities. The fifth headline, establishing a group uh, for continuous development of uh, this uh, vision and the continuous development of the concepts and values of citizenship. Uh, thank you for your attention. And again, I apologize for the technical problems. Thank you, Dr. Abdullah, for your valuable uh, paper. I, I, uh, it is uh, more than a study, I believe. It is a great project. It includes uh, national projects, uh, studies, uh, and the participation of MA students. Uh, and this is a major thing. Uh, as, you, uh, as you said, uh, citizenship uh, are the values of the past, the spirit of the present, uh, and the outlook of the future. You've studied it from three dimensions, uh, from the cognitive, behavioral, and emotional aspect. Uh, in with regards to behavioral dimension, which is the most important, uh, because uh, if knowledge and values do not lead uh, to positive uh, behavior, citizenship will not be, uh, the value of citizenship will not be fulfilled. Uh, the value of citizenship is the behavior. Behavior in, uh, in uh, the work, uh, at work, at home, uh, with friends. We had a very productive uh, session. Now we will open the floor for Q&A. <coughs> we have 30 minutes for your questions. Don't worry. Abdel Hadi Alajmi from Kuwait University.
I would like to thank um, the speakers for their um, papers. Dr. Uh, Ali Watfa, your paper was interesting, but uh, the introduction was uh, nice, but uh, uh, when we uh, saw the results uh, of the university faculty survey, if I was a respondent in this survey and if you ask me about uh, the condition of uh, national universities, uh, I will be uh, criticizing uh, everything. I will be criticizing the minister, the faculty, the institution itself. So can we believe that uh, surveys are um, a, uh, a criteria to uh, measure the performance uh, and to measure uh, public uh, uh, educational uh, policies. I believe that there is a bias here, and our opinions as, the, as a university uh, faculty is uh, biased. We, uh, our opinion uh, are uh, based on a criticism because we are involved in uh, this uh, domain. So there is a structural problem here. Another, uh, another uh, question is about the uh, definition of a citizenship. Uh, your uh, definition uh, said that everything is about uh, citizenship. If we are to teach citizenship or to identify the methodology of a citizenship, how can we define a education without a citizenship? Uh, if a citizenship, uh, educational citizenship, is about raising citizens uh, uh, who are who have good values, uh, who are literate, etc., what would be? Uh, citizenship or what would be education not based on citizenship microphone please I have three questions first how did you choose your sample because sampling is essential in measuring uh, any uh, results or outcomes of a specific study. Uh, another uh, point uh, is that uh, the uh, responses were uh, highly uh, negative. So here we should question again uh, the uh, sampling uh, process. So there are shortcomings in the process of choosing the sample itself, especially uh, that uh, universities uh, were uh, assessed as a uh, bad. Mm, uh, my question to uh, Dr. Uh, Ali Watfa, uh, in the uh, fourth industrial uh, revolution and uh, in uh, the uh, knowledge-based uh, economy, we will see a shift in uh, all uh, understandings and uh, in all uh, data. I would have wished uh, to find more uh, practical and actionable uh, recommendations in your paper. Thank you. Second row, please. Mohammed Yahya from Oman. Dr. Abdullah paper was interesting to me. He spoke about citizenship, but it wasn't clear to me. Uh, do we raise uh, children on the uh, concept of citizenship or uh, on uh, patriotism? Because uh, in uh, our uh, curriculum, in our books, uh, we speak about uh, national civism, uh, national civics. So I believe that citizenship isn't learned. The citizenship uh, is uh, about uh, the mutual interests of, uh, of uh, citizens. When we speak about uh, a positive uh, citizenship, it is uh, not from the uh, perspective of the state or the institutions. It is rather from the perspective of the relations between community uh, members. 
also from the uh, sample uh, were you attention to, uh, to uh, the uh, sources that students rely on uh, to uh, to uh, access uh, information because influence uh, here is no longer based on a closed uh, loops. Amina Al Hajri, Islamic Organization for uh, Science and uh, Education. My question is to Mr. Yahya. In the uh, World uh, Summit for uh, Governments uh, in uh, February 2019, uh, uh, digital uh, citizenship was mentioned uh, and uh, uh, they focused on uh, future uh, skills and competences, uh, skills that uh, uh, are uh, focused on uh, uh, flexibility and uh, digital transformation. Where do we stand vis-à-vis uh, -vis, uh, such a digital transformation? Uh, regarding the fourth industrial revolution, there is ambiguity regarding educational policies. What is our role as institutions, as faculty, as officials in keeping up with these changes in the educational scene? Thank you. I will uh, give it uh, back now to the panelists to answer the qu questions. Mr. Watfa. So uh, let us tackle the final question first. What is our role to uh, promote our universities? What is our role as uh, individuals? Uh, here, our role should be institutionalized. Uh, it should uh, be a uh, socially, economic, and uh, uh, cultural uh, plan uh, or a project, uh, that, a project that involves all institutions within the state to uh, trigger a counter uh, revolution uh, to what is uh, happening. Uh, so uh, this uh, cannot uh, be achieved unless uh, through a large national uh, plan. As individuals, uh, we uh, cannot uh, do anything for fear of worsening the situation. Uh, our colleague uh, Abdel Hadi from uh, Kuwait, uh, you only focused on the sample. You didn't see the uh, documented analysis, uh, our experience uh, in university teaching in the GCC. Uh, you didn't uh, uh, see uh, our expertise, 300 experts, scholars, and researchers from the GCC states were involved in this uh, survey. So uh, uh, we uh, took uh, their opinion and their perspectives into uh, consideration, and this strengthened the position of this survey. Uh, educational budgets uh, in uh, GCC uh, are 0.2 percent of the national budget. What is your take on that? Uh, any uh, president of uh, a university in uh, the GCC state can't be appointed unless through a royal decision. What's your take on that? Are uh, our universities uh, evolving in terms of scientific research? Where do we stand? Uh, uh, relatively to the world. Uh, our institutions uh, are uh, plagued and uh, they are uh, suffering. They are only graduating uh, students uh, that will later be unemployed. So uh, this narrative is a critical one. It is not a political narrative. And unless we adopt such critical uh, narrative, uh, we will not uh, uh, develop or uh, progress. In universities, uh, we have to voice uh, such concerns really allowed to achieve reform. Uh, Mr. Osman Abdel Manik Al Saleh, he is the dean of the uh, uh, of the law college in the University of Kuwait. He is uh, also the advisor of the uh, legal uh, council or the advisory uh, council to the National Assembly. If you read his uh, opinion, I will read it out loud. The university is uh, suffering a crippling 
being inside uh, or within, and uh, he apologizes for being president of the University of Kuwait. Why? Because uh, there are uh, conflicts on. Uh, positions and the university should clean itself from such competition. Uh, there is also a failure at the level of the faculty, uh, academic faculty. If you read his opinion, if you uh, read it uh, well, you can see that uh, this is a worsening. This situation is a worsening and is becoming uh, unsustainable and uh, painful. I will ask you in your universities in Oman, do you have academic freedom? Do you elect your dean or the president of the university? No, they are appointed, so there are no freedoms. My question here, microphone. Microphone, please. Uh, the situation is uh, worse. Okay, okay. We are speaking about uh, the GCC states uh, that uh, have financial resources. We are not speaking of something that uh, uh, doesn't uh, exist. Uh, uh, kindly uh, keep uh, uh, order in this uh, session. He is uh, free uh, and is entitled to his own uh, opinion, and you are entitled to uh, yours. I am happy to have such uh, discussions. It is the first time. Um, Dr. Uh, Ali, uh, you have uh, another question to answer. This is Al Qabas uh, newspaper from the uh, Kuwait, and uh, and uh, there are uh, presidents of universities who are submitting or delivering false. Uh, uh, or forged, forged uh, certificates and diplomas, and they are being tried. Uh, and now uh, they have been uh, delivering such uh, forged uh, certificates for four years. So uh, this is what I mean by telling you that the educational or higher education system uh, is uh, suffering and is failing. You uh, spoke about uh, more actionable uh, recommendations. We identified uh, one uh, reference uh, uh, for uh, public. We want to identify one reference for uh, public uh, policies. So the study's uh, aim is uh, to highlight uh, problems and issues uh, to policy makers in order to make better public policies. M microphone. <laughs> Dr. Amina spoke about uh, uh, digital or IT citizenship. Uh, this uh, uh, concept uh, was adopted in the uh, study. Uh, digital uh, citizenship is about uh, having citizens who are uh, literate, who are acquainted with the 21st century competences, and uh, they have uh, digital uh, knowledge. Mr. al Ahyai, I agree with you. Citizenship as an understanding is uh, diverse, and uh, it uh, differs from one person to another, and it can be approached through a political uh, a cultural or social perspective. However, uh, citizens' rights and obligation remains at the heart of uh, citizenship as an understanding, and such uh, perspectives uh, uh, overlap. You spoke about uh, the choice of uh, the sample. In this study, we uh, did not uh, uh, tackle uh, where a student uh, source their information, and maybe we need another study uh, to identify that. Mr. Ahmad, you speak about actionable recommendations. I believe that the five uh, topics in the vision are all uh, procedural or executable uh, uh, topics, uh, and uh, they uh, detail procedures and measures to uh, take, but because I had to keep uh, 
uh, to stick to the time uh, uh, given uh, to me, I uh, didn't go into the uh, details. Uh, our colleague from uh, Kuwait, uh, you spoke about the lack of one unified definition of citizenship, and I agree with you. Definitions uh, differ from one person to another, from one country to another, but there are general understandings that we can all agree on. When we speak, some people also speak about universal citizenship. So here, uh, there are international uh, definitions and understandings, uh, especially when we speak of uh, people or persons who belong to the world uh, and uh, not uh, to uh, only one uh, country or another. I will take two more questions from the left and two more from the right. Uh, from the right. Thank you. I have a brief comment. Okay. To Mr. Ali Watfa, he is uh, he was my uh, professor in uh, 1994. The uh, image reflected by scientific research in the Arab uh, region is not optimistic. This uh, image, and I will give you figures. In the Arab region, there are 180,000 university uh, uh, professors, 30,000 uh, researchers, and uh, all uh, collectively uh, publish 5,000 uh, scientific uh, research paper per year. This figure is alarming. I will not uh, give you uh, more uh, figures, but let us speak a little bit about uh, the uh, total uh, university budgets. In the Arab uh, world, we only spend like $10 per uh, per individual per year. In Ireland, $1,300 uh, uh, per individual. Uh, compared to our $10, we can say that, yes, the uh, image is uh, pessimistic. Uh, I fled uh, Syria uh, in 1994 uh, uh, along with Mr. Watfa. Yes, uh, we have uh, fled uh, this uh, reality. Let us not uh, compare. Of course, uh, the reality of the GCC states when it comes uh, to uh, academics, uh, their reality is better than other uh, Arab states, uh, Lebanon, uh, Jordan. Lebanon, uh, Lebanon, Jordan, and uh, Tunisia are doing uh, sometimes uh, are not doing uh, better than uh, uh, other Arab countries, but they are doing better than the GCC states. <coughs> Papers, um, especially that of Ali Watfa, spoke uh, of uh, the Fourth Industrial Revolution. Mr. Ali Watfa is our uh, colleague, and we are proud to have him in the University of Kuwait. It is very important uh, to uh, tie the Fourth Industrial Revolution with the uh, concept of uh, citizenship. Uh, uh, also, uh, speaking of digital citizenship is very important. Uh, today, uh, with the uh, with the uh, challenges uh, and burst of uh, modern technologies, uh, today digital citizenship should be learned in universities in a practical way uh, that is um, in line with our reality. Today, uh, societies are going back to localization and specificities. Uh, in the Arab world, we have our own specificities. We have our own Arab mindset, and this mindset uh, 
is uh, uh, based on exclusion and racism. Uh, apologies if uh, this uh, description is uh, harsh and therefore uh, um, that is why we are not satisfied with our own uh, reality. That is why we do not have uh, freedoms. Uh, this reality is uh, present in uh, Kuwait and any other Arab uh, state. It is very important also to be transparent in our scientific research and to focus in our papers on discrimination uh, that uh, takes place at all levels in our countries. Uh, uh, the colleague from uh, Sudan be uh, concise in your uh, comments, uh, please. Assalamu alaikum. <coughs> when we speak about citizenship, we speak about the sense of belonging to your uh, society or your uh, community. And here there are three key drivers, family, the society, and the state. The state uh, is highly important uh, when it comes to reality and uh, belonging because uh, citizenship uh, is tightly linked to employment, to uh, freedoms, and employment and freedoms are both guaranteed by the state. The so the, another, the second point is education isn't doing well when we speak about education in the Arab states, there are shortcomings. Yes, I agree, but we shouldn't generalize. I am happy with what Mr. Watfa said. I agree that uh, there is like uh, a uh, cynical reality sometimes uh, and it should be highlighted. I uh, teach in KSA and I reached a conclusion saying that uh, the social gap in the uh, GCC region led to a sort of distraction Youngsters are the next generation to build the future. And uh, it is very important that they receive their certificate and start working instead of hanging it on the wall. There, I, I was in a, a conference in London. Uh, one of the speakers said that uh, he uh, visited the uh, GCC state he said that uh, universities uh, were uh, established, uh, there were libraries, there were uh, research centers, but there were no students inside them. So uh, students should be raised from uh, based on a mindset that they are the future builders of their uh, country. Uh, education uh, rather than uh, finding a job to uh, make uh, money. Thank you, Aisha Darmaki from Oman. Thank you, Mr. Ali, for your uh, paper. It is uh, a uh, clear paper. I have two uh, comments uh, regarding uh, the uh, budget. Uh, you said that the uh, budget is quasi absent in uh, uh, the GCC research. Uh, I do not know where uh, you sourced uh, this information. Maybe uh, you are, uh, resorted to uh, some uh, references, but uh, as far as Oman is concerned, we do have a uh, budget uh, coming from the Ministry of Finance to support uh, scientific uh, research and millions of reals are allocated uh, uh, 
to uh, research uh, science and uh, to scientific research and the scientific research council we uh, co are conducting the um, we are conducting a research that enjoy millions of uh, reals in terms of fu uh, funding I am uh, speaking uh, from my position as a, a member in the uh, so, uh, uh, University Council. Regarding academic corruption, um, higher education universities and colleges in the GCC region are, uh, are claimed to be uh, fighting uh, corruption. And uh, they are uh, bringing uh, those uh, presidents uh, who delivered uh, false uh, certificates to justice, while in other Arab uh, states, uh, uh, this uh, corruption is being uh, discarded or overlooked. My uh, question to my Omani uh, colleague, uh, um, I uh, looked uh, to uh, the uh, results of a higher education, but how do they translate on the ground today? Assalamu alaikum. Khulud Al Abedi from uh, Doha Institute for um, Graduate Studies. Thank you for this. Uh, session i have a comment to make uh, to dr uh, ali uh, from my uh, experience in uh, teaching i uh, after receiving the uh, phd i entered into uh, the market and i believe myself to be an hr practitioner and not an academic you spoke about critical thinking and analysis from my experience uh, uh, which is humble in uh, teaching uh, i uh, noticed that uh, arab universities uh, graduates uh, students uh, who uh, uh, who write uh, narratives uh, and not uh, analysis. When I first uh, joined the Manchester University as a student, uh, my uh, professor used to correct my uh, report and uh, he told me that I didn't have any analytical uh, thinking or critical thinking whatsoever. So I learned from the British University where I was more than I learned from the Arab University. When it comes to academic corruption, uh, this is not limited to false diplomas or uh, certificates. When I have fourth industrial revolutions or fifth industrial revolution and I have institutions to, uh, uh, to write uh, uh, papers uh, without involving students, uh, I cannot speak of a revolution. P I yes, I I sp I I, um, I made uh, the uh, the knowledge of uh, persons from uh, scientific colleges who said that uh, masters uh, students are paying other students to write their essays or their uh, thesis, and this is corruption. In uh, academics, uh, uh, there is a scientific path, but there is also a literary uh, path. However, the uh, marketplace, uh, uh, the marketplace, uh, uh, there's a gap between the uh, market and uh, the university outcomes. Qatar Airways, Sadra, etc., used to uh, deliver programs, modern programs for uh, modern graduates, whereby the student enroll in such problems for two years and they uh, get familiar with uh, history, uh, humanities, languages, and uh, the outcome will uh, be uh, close to the uh, marketplace. So uh, here we try to bridge uh, the gap. Uh, Hiba Mahmoud from Sudan. There's a, a confusion between scientific research 
and academic research and their outcomes from uh, the one hand and uh, the uh, public policy documents on the other uh, hand. Uh, the public policy follow a certain process uh, in analysis and every step has its own uh, process. If we take, for example, the example of Malaysia, Scientific uh, research uh, delivered by universities are of high uh, quality and high level, and they are part of the inputs uh, in a public policy uh, making. Uh, there uh, are uh, reports uh, written and uh, studies written uh, about uh, policy, public policy uh, making. My question is to Mr. Ali. However, modernization, uh, whatever modernization uh, we uh, do, uh, what will be the effect uh, if we do not have a political uh, will in our uh, state uh, to actually implement uh, those policies? Next question, please. Mrs. Amani Lonenman, uh, Algeria. I would like to thank Mr. Ali Fat Watfa for the, his valuable paper. I have two questions. First, uh, about the uh, fourth industrial revolution and the GCC state. Uh, uh, we uh, try as much as possible to leverage uh, modern technologies. But if we take the 4IR, uh, there are indicators that uh, show uh, that the damage of this revolution will be significant on the humanity. Robotics will uh, replace uh, human beings. So how can we look into this relationship between robots and human beings in the future, especially that robots uh, will take over, can take over the uh, market? Uh, also, can we achieve a balance between uh, the uh, uh, pros of uh, scientific uh, research and the uh, cons of scientific uh, research, especially that uh, human beings have the right to live in a, a certain uh, um, condition in their uh, community. Also, you spoke about citizenship and corruption. Corruption in uh, uh, ed uh, higher education in the Arab states is uh, present, but if we take the example of the GCC states, uh, uh, educational attainment uh, in the GCC state uh, is uh, high. even in uh, innovation. But if we uh, take, uh, for example, uh, levels of the wage of Arab and uh, foreigners, we see a gap between uh, the foreigner salary and the Arab uh, salary. And uh, this uh, uh, justifies uh, corruption. Next uh, question, we have one, uh, we have only five minutes to answer uh, those questions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like uh, to uh, clarify uh, what uh, Mr. Ali uh, said about freedoms inside universities. The university is part uh, of a bigger uh, system, which is the state system. If the uh, state has uh, a political, uh, legal, and constitutional uh, regime or policy, uh, and this uh, regime is uh, guarantees uh, freedoms, the university will guarantee freedom uh, uh, in its uh, turn. However, uh, if the regime is a dictatorship, uh, in the, uh, this will uh, reflect also in uh, universities. I've uh, been a teacher and a, pr a professor and a researcher for the last 40 years uh, in uh, Kuwait. Uh, most uh, departments, uh, the, the uh, political science department in universities is the most uh, sensitive of uh, all. As a, a dean, I never received any a telephone call in a Kuwait from any Kuwaiti official, and I never allowed in my uh, college to uh, to uh, prepare a research uh, be, uh, because we are uh, receiving pressure to do so, for example. I am uh, uh, proud uh, to be a Kuwaiti citizen, and uh, I can assert to you that uh, uh, from my position as a dean, I, never, uh, I, I was never subject to such a pressure in uh, making uh, any uh, scientific research. Thank you uh, for your answers, uh, for your questions. I, uh, I am aware that uh, this uh, issue is uh, concerning and uh, but I am happy that we are discussing it uh, seriously now. 
Uh, I am uh, proud uh, to listen uh, to all your uh, opinions. Mr. Abdelrida, I agree with you, but uh, academic uh, freedoms uh, pertain also to how we choose our deans, how we choose our presidents, uh, and uh, whether or not anyone uh, uh, writes anything that doesn't uh, please uh, the uh, state or the people in uh, power. Our <coughs> colleague uh, who uh, spoke about the gap uh, in a uh, wage, uh, future uh, science uh, uh, tackles uh, the scene even beyond uh, robots. Uh, yes, uh, robots uh, may take uh, over our uh, jobs and employment, and this is an issue that is uh, current being uh, tackled uh, by uh, institutions and organizations around the world. Uh, uh, Mahal Ubaidi from uh, Doha Institute, I thank you for uh, the beautiful highlights you uh, uh, put uh, forth. Uh, we are uh, moving in the same direction. Yes, uh, if we do not have uh, a mindset of critical uh, thinking, we are going uh, uh, straight uh, to hell. When a French author speaks about, about France, you would believe that France uh, is uh, still in a prehistory because uh, his uh, criticism is uh, harsh. In uh, the Arab region, we do not see such a uh, criticism. Uh, our colleague from the Sultanate on Oman, it seems uh, that um, our culture is uh, one. You are a member uh, of the University uh, Council, but you are not aware of the statistics regarding uh, that uh, uh, university budget is only 0.2% of a national budget compared to 7% in Israel. I am not only, sp I, w I didn't speak about uh, Qatar. Uh, but uh, this percentage uh, was uh, recently raised. If you go to the website of the Doha Institute, you will be able to uh, look uh, into uh, statistics. University uh, do not even uh, reward their uh, professors for achieving a specific uh, research. I am speaking clearly here. Yes. Uh, uh, there are uh, developments in uh, the scientific research field and universities that I didn't mention because I didn't want to come off as uh, someone uh, complimenting uh, Qatar just because I am a guest uh, here. But uh, Qatar has uh, been uh, performing really well in this uh, field. Kuwait uh, has always uh, been involved in uh, regional conferences, and now they are semi or quasi absent. Uh, we do not uh, know uh, why. Qatar is leading the way. I didn't want to say that in the beginning, uh, but uh, it is. Thank you uh, for your questions. I would, I would like uh, also to thank Mr. Azam. Uh, University of Damascus is proud of you. Mr. Mohsen Abu Aziz, thank you uh, despite not giving you the opportunity to talk. Thank you all. Uh, I was happy to be part of this uh, session. Uh, apologies if some of my criticism uh, annoyed you or made you feel uncomfortable. Excuse me for that. Thank you, Dr. Fahad. Uh, Mrs. Aisha's uh, intervention uh, regarding how scientific research transla translates uh, on the uh, ground. Uh, last year, uh, we completed a, a research and we are now about to uh, build a uh, comprehensive strategy to teach uh, citizenship in uh, educational institutions. And we believe that this year, the uh, Scientific Research Council will act uh, upon uh, this uh, research to uh, make uh, citizenship in universities uh, a reality. So uh, 
uh, the journey isn't uh, like uh, uh, an easy ride. It is a long uh, journey that uh, requires uh, a synergy between uh, efforts and b uh, between uh, c uh, between um, civil associations and the uh, state. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Abdullah, uh, Mr. Ali, Mrs. Uh, Jalila, for this uh, interesting uh, session regarding educational uh, public uh, policies. Uh, uh, despite uh, the uh, despite uh, uh, the uh, worries and concerns it uh, carried uh, with it, uh, we uh, thank you for your interesting interventions and comments uh, as well. And hopefully, we will meet in uh, other sessions and other panel panels in the future. Thank you.